So the question was asked, what gives DNA its stability? And after reviewing your answers, we found that it is indeed the double helix right there. Okay? So the covalent bonds on the sugars and phosphates do make it strong, and they do keep the two side chains together. But what keeps the actual uh, two side chains still bonded and connected is the twist of the, of the ladder. Okay? So today we're going to look at DNA and how it copies itself. Now, I was about to start talking about the stages of interphase. They're G1, S, and G2. What happens in the S phase? Nope, that's G2. The, the proofreading is G2. Copies, we copy DNA. And we make more DNA. Okay? So we actually make a complete new set of DNA in the S phase. We'll talk about that. That's what today's about. We'll talk about the roles of the proteins and what they play in DNA replication. And we'll talk about the different, uh, different types of replication in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Make sure you have only one tab open. So because DNA is made of two strands and two complementary strands of base pairs, G's with C's, T's with A's, if the strands are separated, then each strand can actually serve as a pattern to make a new one, right? So if I pull DNA apart and I just match up new G's, C's, T's, and A's, I could have two identical sets in the end. Bless you. So the, rep bless you. the process of making a copy of DNA is what is called DNA replication. That's probably the easiest biological term to remember. What do you call copying DNA? DNA replication. That's what do you call it when DNA reproduces? DNA replication. Now, in DNA replication, the DNA molecule unwinds and the two sides split, and then new bases are added to each side until two identical sequences result. Are the hydrogen bonds easily broken between DNA? Yeah, it's a weak hydrogen bond. Are they going to need some help, though? Yeah, because DNA is not just going to unwind itself. So as the double helix unwinds, the two complementary strands of DNA separate from each other and form Y shapes. So these Y shaped areas are what are called replication forks. Who has a zippy hoodie on? There you go, Mr. Ullman, stand up. Let me borrow you. Come here. Face your classmates. All right, so he has a double stranded structure right here, right? You got a shirt on underneath there? Yes. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> okay. So basically by separating this, it's a little uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah. It feels wrong, too. Okay. So you do it. There you go. Okay. So now he has two strands, right? Could I make a new zipper on each one? Yeah. Like put, put new teeth on that match? Yeah. But they'd be opposite, right? But they'd be the same. Okay? So I'd still have both parts when I was done. So each side's a little different. But if I were to copy each side, I'd have two identical strands. Unzip it just halfway. So a little bit. There you go. See the Y there? That's what's called a replication fork, where you first start to separate the DNA. Thank you. So at that fork is where new nucleotides are added to each side. So DNA unzips a little bit, and then it starts immediately making a new copy. So it's not like it unzips itself completely, because that would be too chaotic. Remember, we're talking about a zipper that is 2.2 billion teeth long. Okay, that's a big zipper. A lot of teeth on a zipper, right? So each double strand of DNA helix is made of one new strand of DNA and one of the original. So every time I copy me, my DNA, I'm going to have the original strand, and I'm going to have a brand new strand that gets made. What stage of interphase does this happen in? The S phase, right? Is this where we make our sister chromatid at? Yes. Okay. You guys remember that? Each chromosome has two chromatids, right? So during the S phase is where you copy your chromosome, chromatid, so you have two chromatids, OK? Hopefully we all get that. So what happens is this. The first enzyme is DNA helicase. Everybody say DNA helicase. DNA helicase. 
So helicase does something very special. It separates the nucleotides by breaking hydrogen bonds. Okay? Think of it as a wedge. It just wedges between DNA and separates it. Okay? Now, this happens, and you can see, and immediately another enzyme, everybody say DNA polymerase, brings new nucleotides and forms new hydrogen bonds, also forms new covalent bonds on the side chains, and then will actually rezip DNA of the new strands. So in each of these strands, as we copy DNA, we have part of the old and part of the new, half and half. But in the end, should I have two identical strands as long as I don't make a mistake? Yes. Okay. This is how DNA replicates itself. How many enzymes are involved here? Two, DNA helicase unzips and breaks hydrogen bonds. DNA polymerase reforms new covalent bonds and new hydrogen bonds. What are you looking at? Oh, okay. Look like Bigfoot from over there. All right. Let's stay focused. So the replication of DNA involves many proteins that form a machine-like complex of moving parts. And each protein has a specific function. Proteins called DNA helicases. Everybody say DNA helicase. Breaks hydrogen bonds. And it's easy to remember because it starts with an H. It's helicase, right? And it unwinds the DNA, double helix during DNA replication. Where does this happen? Everybody say the S phase of interphase. Say, this is where I get my sister chromatid. And these proteins wedge themselves between the two strands of the double helix, and they actually break the bonds between the base pairs. Are these bonds easily broken? Yes, because they are weak hydrogen bonds, right? I don't have to worry about the side chains coming apart because they are held together by covalent bonds, right? And then these other proteins do everything else, DNA polymerase. Everybody say DNA polymerase brings in new nucleotides, forms new hydrogen bonds, and forms new covalent bonds between sugars and phosphates. Yeah, I lost you all there. That's okay. All right. So this is actually going to form a new DNA molecule, and it's going to move along each strand and add nucleotides that pair with each base. So here's the question. We have 2.2 billion base pairs. If we only had this happening once, would we be able to copy our DNA fast enough to divide? No. So on the same DNA, this will be happening thousands of times. We'll, we'll talk more about that. Unless you're a bacteria. So DNA polymerase also ha serves as a proofreading function. Everybody say G2. So after the synthesis phase is G2 phase, this is where the proofreading of DNA polymerase comes in, checks it before we divide. So during DNA replication, errors sometimes occur, and the wrong nucleotide is added to the new strand. And if a mismatch occurs, DNA polymerase can actually backtrack, remove the incorrect nucleotide, and replace it with a correct one. That in itself is amazing. Why? Because you have 2.2 billion base pairs, and it can catch a mistake. In fact, it rarely makes a mistake, catching mistakes. Think of it as your English teacher. They catch every mistake, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah? oh I hated that. I remember. Oh, turn in the paper and be like, I know I missed something, you know? <laughs> yeah. I know. That's frustrating, isn't it? It is. Critique me, I'll critique you. Yeah, I know. I, know. I used to hate turning on papers. I, I didn't mind writing them, I just hated it when I, like, nitpick and... Uh, I know, right? I, I picked the scab, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> so, all cells... Yeah, okay. 
I, I know how much students love English, so I just thought I'd just have fun with it for a minute. So all cells have chromosomes, but eukaryotes and prokaryotes replicate their chromosomes differently. Go figure. We have a nucleus and they don't. In prokaryotic cells, replication starts at one point. And in eukaryotic cells, replication starts at many sites along the chromosome. Prokaryotic cells usually have a single chromosome, which is a closed loop attached to the intercell membrane. And replication in prokaryotes begins at one place along the loop. This site is called the origin of replication. I want everybody to kind of turn towards me, put their pencil down, put your two fingers up like this and touch them. I'll wait for us all to look silly together. Okay. Everybody say, yeah, where are you at? Where are you at? Everybody look at me. Okay. Everybody say ET. No, you guys are too young for that one, aren't you? All right, so everybody say, this is the origin of replication. I mean, everybody say, this is the origin of replication. As bacteria divide, they have two replication forks. So there's like two Ys here, right? Here we go. Like two little Easter bunnies, okay? But they're forks, right? So imagine these, imagine at the top, take your two fingers, put them together, and then separate the DNA into two loops, right? Everybody get down to the bottom. Once you're done, you'd have two different rubber bands kind of or loops here, right? You get that? Okay. One origin of replication, two replication forks, one replication bubble as it goes around. Okay? That's bacteria prokaryotes. How many chromosomes do they have? One, and they have very little genetic information because they're so simple. They can reproduce like that. We have way too much DNA to do it with just one origin of replication. That would not work. So two replication forks begin at the origin of replication in prokaryotes, and replication occurs in opposite directions until the forks meet on the opposite end of the loop. We, however, have several chromosomes, in our case, 46 different chromosomes. And this process allows eukaryotic cells to replicate their DNA faster than uh, prokaryotes because we have more than one origin of replication. I will tell you, if we were to try to reproduce at the same rate as a prokaryote with only one origin of replication, there's no way we'd be able to make cells efficiently enough to live. So two, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. wait, not done dividing, don't split, sorry. DNA always scares me. All the genomes. Little, little gangster gnomes, like, like the bling on, you know, like little rapper gnomes, genomes. <laughs> Can you see, like, a, I'm going to get a little garden gnome, put, have him throw in, like, a gang sign in my front yard. He'd be my genome. No? <laughs> no? <laughs> well, you need me to wait still? We good? Okay. So two distinct replication forks form at each start site, and a replication starts to occur in opposite directions. This process forms what are called replication bubbles along the DNA molecule, and they continue to get larger as more of the DNA is copied until the whole thing is copied. So, you have somebody next to you, right? I want you to turn to them. Who needs a partner? You need a Okay, stand up. You need a partner. Come here. We'll do this together. Come here. So, we're, we are going to be the same, or we're going to all be on the same chromosome. 
pretend there's a line like a pole down the middle of us. I'm going to start here. You start somewhere else, underneath or above me. You start somewhere else here. Okay. Oh, here, let me get farther down. You get farther up. There. Okay, there we go. So if these are now multiple replication points, right, origins of replication, start dividing. Stop right there. At this point, we have like bubbles in DNA where we opened it up and copied it, right? You guys with me? Okay. Keep going until we run into each other. At this point, we would be done, and then I'd have the separate strands, correct? Okay. So on one of our chromosomes, we can actually have thousands of replication bubbles. Keep in mind, 2.2 billion base pairs, right? Okay, thanks. All right. So in multiple replication forks within multiple replication bubbles. That's why we can divide faster, not divide, we can copy our DNA more efficiently than prokaryotes. Come on, computer. Well, mine's not showing up. There we go. Okay, so on our actual prokaryotic DNA, they have loop DNA. They have one origin of replication, two replication forks, and they go just like you guys did to the bottom until they have two separate loops of DNA one looped chromosome. We are different. We have way too much DNA to replicate with only one origin of replication. We must do it multiple times on the same chromosome to be more efficient. So we have multiple replication bubbles, multiple replication forks within those bubbles so that we're able to copy our DNA faster. You guys get that? It's not terribly difficult, but keep in mind that there is within this DNA helicase and DNA polymerase doing its thing. DNA helicase breaking hydrogen bonds, DNA polymerase reforming new uh, hydrogen bonds, bringing in new nucleotides, and forming new covalent bonds between sugar and phosphate groups. So the smallest eukaryotic chromosomes are often 10 times the size of a prokaryotic chromosome. Eukaryotic chromosomes are so long it would take 33 days to replicate a typical human chromosome if there were only one origin of replication. So, you guys, just to give you an idea, we need to replicate ours in under eight hours so that we can divide our skin cells every day, like every 17 hours we make new skin cells. 33 days to wait for our DNA copy, DNA to get copied is not okay. That wouldn't work. So human chromosomes are replicated in about 100 sections. So now, I told you, 2.2 billion base pairs there's hundreds of thousands of base pairs on each chromosome, so we would split them apart into 100 uh, nucleotide sections, and there's about 100,000 nucleotides long, each section with its own different starting point, just like we had three of us doing that, okay? So they kind of break apart the chromosomes, and it's more of an assembly line type thing. Well, all at the same time. Really. So because eukaryotic cells have multiple replication forks working at the same time, an entire human chromosome can be replicated in under eight hours. That's why we can make new skin cells every 17 hours. Hey, if you don't eat the right foods, would you have the right proteins and the right amino acids? No, and then you might not be able to make helicase and polymerase as efficiently, right? So is the food you eat important to this whole process? Yeah. So a quick summary, then we'll talk about pre-lab. I won't give you homework tonight. In DNA replication, the DNA molecule unwinds and the two sides split. New bases are added to each side until two identical sequences result. Keep in mind, it's helicase that splits DNA and it's DNA polymerase that brings in new nucleotides, forms new hydrogen bonds, and new covalent bonds along the side groups. The replication of DNA involves many proteins that form a machine-like complex of moving parts. And in prokaryotic cells, Replication starts at a single site in eukaryotic cells. Replication starts at many sites. That's why we're able to replicate our DNA efficiently. 